Now to find out if Alibaba can maintain its winning streak, let's head over to Hong Kong, where David Dai will join us. He's a senior analyst for Sanford C. Bernstein, a research and brokerage firm. Welcome, David. Thanks for having me. So as we saw there, Alibaba had a strong quarter with sales up 40%. What is the company getting right in their business strategy? Well, the company is doing right on multiple fronts, and most significantly is on two fronts. One is acquiring more and more users, especially in the less developed areas. And the other is upgrading the shopping experience uh, with the feed recommendations, personalized recommendations, and uh, with better AI and big data technologies, it is able to push information that are most likely uh, most relevant to each individual users to them, uh, which uh, increases the conversion rate and also enhances the shopping experience. Now, a lot of people were wondered whether Alibaba would be affected by the US-China trade war. It doesn't seem that way. Why do you think Alibaba has been much more resistant, has really held up much better with this background? I think the biggest reason is that Alibaba is riding a major secular structural trend that uh, China is uh, going through right now was the increase of uh, digitalization of business businesses, increase in digitalization in consumer experience. Uh, the online penetration is going up uh, structurally, and Alibaba is doing everything that it can to increase uh, to increase the online penetration of uh, shopping, online penetration of e-commerce. So, if you look at uh, the uh, total consumption of total retail growth in China, it has slowed down year on year, but it didn't slow down as much as people feared. And on top of that, online com consumption growth uh, has been consistently growing at a much faster pace than the total retail, and that's where Alibaba benefits the most. So then if trade tensions aren't a big concern for the company right now, where do you see Alibaba's biggest challenges coming from? Well, the biggest challenge, uh, as well as the biggest opportunity, I would say, is still coming from uh, the uh, online penetration, especially in the less developed areas. Uh, Alibaba right now has about 750 million monthly active users. Its uh, biggest, uh, uh, biggest peer, uh, WeChat, uh, which is the most used app in China, has more than 1.1 billion users, which means that there was another 350 million users in China that are using WeChat but not using uh, Alibaba, Taobao, or Tmall yet. And these 350 million users will be the biggest, um, biggest uh, growth driver for Alibaba in the next few years if they can continue to increase the penetration in the left developed areas. Now you mentioned the domestic market there. What about the international market? How is Alibaba faring outside of China? Yeah, Alibaba, in, uh, uh, right now, the biggest focus is obviously still in China, given that it is the, by far the biggest revenue and profit driver. But outside China, Alibaba is not giving up the, the uh, uh, market opportunities uh, either. In the, uh, the, the focus are basically coming from two fronts. One is the direct shopping experience uh, from Southeast Asia, in, in particular with Lazada, which Alibaba acquired a few years ago. And the other is uh, the international shopping experience from overseas, to, uh, uh, shipping from China to overseas market. That's basically AliExpress as well as the B2B market. And on all these fronts, Alibaba is making a significant progress. And most important or most significant would be Lazada in Southeast Asian market, which is growing. The market itself is growing rapidly. And Alibaba, Lazada is making a very good growth there with orders growing triple digits for the last three consecutive quarters. So as you look at some of Alibaba's rivals, who's nipping at its heels the closest? Well, uh, Alibaba's biggest rival historically has always been JD, uh, because JD has always been offering the higher and premium product. But uh, since the second half of last year, my understanding is that the company's biggest focus is no longer on JD. It's instead focusing on Pinduoduo, because like I said, the major growth is coming from lower and, and the less developed areas. And Pinduoduo, uh, despite being a smaller rival as compared to JD, it is actually uh, having a bigger presence in less developed areas in terms of the user base, in terms of the uh, sh uh, shopping frequency. And that is where 
Alibaba wants to penetrate the most, and, and that's also causing uh, the biggest tension between Alibaba and uh, Pinduoduo. And very quickly, David, we have about 20 seconds. We know that Jack Ma is going to be stepping down as Alibaba's chairman next month, and Daniel Jung will take the helm. How do you see that affecting the company's direction and people's confidence in it going forward? Well, if anything, I think the last quarter's stellar results uh, would have cleared any doubts that any investors would have about the company uh, for, uh, before Jack Ma's uh, stepping down, because Jack Ma has already uh, you know, uh, removed himself from the day-to-day -day operations of the business, and uh, this quarter is the last quarter before he steps down as the chairman, and the results absolutely shows that uh, there is no doubt that Alibaba will have a very smooth transition and will continue to perform well after he steps down. All right, David Dai there, senior analyst for Sanford C. Bernstein.